so welcome to third tutorial of this course so in this tutorial we'll be learning how to identify point group and we will take different examples different solved examples we will take 2d objects we will take 3d objects we'll also take different molecules so let us start this tutorial so identifying point group is very very important for this course so you must need to learn very very carefully that how to identify point group of a molecule because rest of the course totally depends on this particular step okay so let's get this going tutorial 3 and today we'll be discussing point group identification so basically what we need to do is we need to identify what are the symmetry elements present and what are the corresponding operations right given a range of different things and what happens if we distort a molecule how does the point group changes and so on so forth okay all right so let's say if you have so let's we will start with 2d objects random objects we will choose so let's say if you have a smiley face it's a circle with two eyes and a smiley right so what do you think the point group of this will be so if we try to list down the elements we have e and we have a c2 which is passing through the center right like this so you have a i'm not going to draw for all the molecules i'm just mentioning it for the sake of this first molecule now it's so a sigma v1 and we will have sigma v2 right so sigma v1 will be the plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the board and carrying c2 and sigma v2 will be the plane which is in the plane of the board and also carrying c2 right so this is the case like water molecule so you have c2 v point group right okay so that was easy so now let's look at another drawing like this so what we have today is a uh, uh, arrowhead something like this okay not the complete arrow just the arrowhead so here we had smiley now we have arrowhead so arrowhead also has the same set of symmetry elements if you notice so you have a c2 running through like this and then you have sigma which is in the plane of the board sigma which is perpendicular to the plane of the board both carrying c2s so again the point group will be c2v right so that is easy again now let's look at hash sign so that can get little tricky what is the point group here? So hash sign. Consider that these lines are parallel and slightly angled to this one. So the vertical lines are not completely vertical at a certain angle. Let's say the angle between this is 80 degree or something, right? Okay. So now what will be the point group? So if you notice that you have a C2 which is perpendicular to the plane of the board passing through the center, then you have another C2 which is bisecting these two like this let me just draw it so you have one c2 like this another c2 like this another c2 like this right so you have three c2s and all three of them are perpendicular to each other so you have e c2 c2 prime c2 double prime or you can also say two c2s which are perpendicular to one of the c2 so you have c2 prime c2 double prime what else do you have do you have i here yes you have i what else do you have you have three sigmas each of the c2 will be containing one sigma so you have sigma one sigma two none of these will be sigma h so i'm just writing sigma you can say sigma v1 v2 v3 and so on or d1 d2 d3 right so now this goes into what kind of point group any ideas so let us leave this to you as a home assignment so home assignment now we have listed this elements your job is to find what will be the point group okay now let's take another example so what we have is a snowflake okay so snowflake is it looks something like this now if you carefully 
see that it will have a C6 axis. It's almost like a benzene case, right? So it has a order 6 symmetry. So it will have C6 axis, which is perpendicular to this I, sigma H, and so on and so forth, right? So what will be the point group? So you have E, C6, C3, C2, then there will be C2s which are running in the plane of the boards and you have sigma H and you will also have sigma Ds and so on and so forth, right? You will also have I. So again, what will be the point group here? So I will ask you to do that. Okay, so try to work it out. So similar to this, the way I have picked up a few shapes, try to look around where you are living or where you are studying, take different objects and try to find out what point group does it belong to. So that, that will give you some practice of how to identify point group of a object or a molecule. Once you know how to find out point group of an object, the molecule will also be an easy case. Okay, so these were 2D objects. So let us look at some 3D objects. So the first example I have here is styrofoam. I typically, if it's an offline class, I typically carry these items so that it is uh, visible to all of you. But in online class, I can only draw, but you should be able to imagine how a styrofoam cup looks like so basically you have a it's not a right circular cylinder it's something like this right so you have a styrofoam cup which is used to drink tea right a portable cup now what will be the point group of this so if you think that if you bisect or if axis which is going through the center of this will be a what kind of axis this will be this will be c infinity axis right and if you now take the planes which are bisecting in the middle and containing this axis so these there will be infinity such planes which will be all of them will be sigma v's and then of course you have e right so this basically is like an hcl molecule so you have c infinity v point group right so that is easy. Now let's say if we add handle to this. Okay. So now ceramic mug, which you use to drink coffee, let's say mug with handle. So how does it look? So you have, now this is like, a, let's say you have a right circular cylinder kind of thing and you have a handle. So, and from the top, if you look, it looks something like this, right? So this is a view from the top. This is from the side. Okay. So now what will be the point group here? So let us list down the elements. So you have E, what else do you have? Do you have any C2 here? Any rotational axis? you don't have any rotational axis because of this handle destroying the symmetry so all you have is one plane which is passing through this so vertical plane which is passing through this right so you have sigma so the point group will be cs there is no other symmetry element or operation right so that is easy likewise you can pick up any object around you and try to work out different these things now let's say if you have a propeller you must have seen propeller like uh, for example exhaust fan in your home right so propeller with three blades how does it look so you have a circle which is the center of the motor and then you have a blade kind of thing where some part of the blade is coming out of the plane so let's draw that thick right and this part let's say is going behind the plane of the board likewise that's how it will 
propel all the blades will not be in the plane of the board right so they'll be like there'll be a little twist to the blades that's how it will propel okay so now what will be the point group what all symmetry elements it will present uh, it will contain so you have e then you will have c3 passing through the center and perpendicular to the plane of the board and you will also have three c2s now the c2s will be bisecting each blade like this okay in the plane of the board so half of the blade is coming out of the plane of the board half of the plane is going below the plane of the board and when you do this rotation this half goes there and this half comes here and similarly this thing also is reflected right so this is how it will have three c2 so that means there is no other plane or anything any other symmetry element so this will be a d3 point group similarly you can have propeller with four blades so then it will be d4 point group and so on and so forth right so propeller with three blades so now this is for 2D and 3D objects. Let us now uh, look at some molecules also. And let's see what happens if we distort these molecules. So we'll be looking at molecules with, because regular geometry we all understand by now, right? But what happens if we distort these molecules, how the point group changes? With distorted geometries. So when I say distorted geometries, we will just change the bond length of one particular bond hypothetically. Okay. I mean, it can happen in real time also, depending on what kind of ligands are available and so on and so forth. So here we'll be doing only hypothetically. So you have MX3 molecule. Let's say it is the first molecule is trigonal planar. So trigonal planar is uh, you have MX x x right so this one is simple d3h okay so i'm not going to work out this molecule i'll just tell you how the distortion changes the point group now so let's say the distortion is so this is my distortion where what i'm doing is i'm lifting m out of the plane so what happens if i lift m out of the plane of the boat so then basically it becomes like an umbrella so you have x x x right so top view still looks like this but you, what you have done is you have lifted m out of the plane of the boat so now from d3h now you have gone to c3v right later on we will see how these kind of distortions are actually very very important to understand but today we are just focusing on how a particular distortion changes the point group okay so you have from d3h you went to c3v because what you have done is you have basically killed sigma h in the process right so i can say if i'm removing sigma h out of this so i will lead to c3v kind of thing okay rest of the planes and all the other symmetry elements are still present and it must follow the closure property of the group which it does follow right so what you are left with is c3v so let us do similar kind of distortions in different molecules and see so let's say if you now have mx4 which is originally tetrahedral so then you know how to draw a tetrahedral molecule so you have x x x right and this is a td point of tetrahedral now what is the distortion here distortion is so what question says slightly flattening the molecule along one of the c2 axis so what you are doing is 
where is the C2 axis? Let us draw the C2 axis here. So this is my C2 axis in the plane of the board. Okay, this will be reflecting these two axes and these two axes, right? So now if I flatten this molecule along one of the C2 axis, how does it look? So these two will not be flattened because I'm trying to flatten about this C2 axis. So these two will not be affected. Or let's say these two will also be affected. Let's do one by one. So let's first distort only these two angles. Okay. So what I have is basically you have him x x and what you have is x x so now this angle is no more 109 degree 28 minutes this angle is still the same as tetrahedral angle so that would mean what will be my point group so now my point group will be c2 v and how do i get c2 v try to work it out yourself here i am giving you the point group answer and i am asking you to find out all the elements and see if uh, this is correct or not right similarly if you compress this angle also again you will end up getting c2v point group right so try to work it out and see this kind of distortion how this kind of distortion what all elements what all symmetry elements are killed in the process when you do this distortion so if you have difficulty in understanding this distortion maybe what we can do is we can draw this molecule inside a cube and do the same distortion okay so inside the cube if you draw it will be a tetrahedral you have center one bond going to this diagonal, one bond going to this, sorry, vertex, this vertex, and that vertex, right? So this gives you a tetrahedral. So this is a TD geometry. Now the distortion actually takes it to a different one. So let's see what is the distortion here. What we have done here is This is my center again. So these two bonds are not compressed. Let's say what we have done is we have compressed only these two bonds. So instead of going to vertex, now they are falling on one of the face diagonals. Right. This is how the distortion looks like. So instead of all the way to the vertices, now I'm resting my bonds or my atoms at the somewhere in between the face diagonal okay so now th that means this angle which was initially 109 28 minutes degree 28 minutes now this is less than 109 degree 28 minutes right rest of the angles angle is or the other angle is still the same it will of course affect the other angles also so now what all elements are killed in this process that you have to visualize. So what you have basically what you have to do is you have to sit inside the cube yourself and see how the bonds are changing or how the elements are affected. How many C4s or C3s or C2s are there initially when it is it was a tetrahedral and now what we are left with is only C2V. Is that correct? Do we have more symmetry elements? Do we have less symmetry elements? So try to work it out. So I have given you an approach how to solve this problem, this kind of problems, but try to work it out yourself. Otherwise, we can always discuss during the interaction session. Okay. All right. So let's take more examples like this. So this one is simple. So you have MX4. Originally, the geometry is square planar. So that would mean a D4H point group, right? So you have M, X, it's like PTCL4. 
So you have D4H. Again, we are not going to discuss. And now the distortion is elongating two trans MX bonds. So that means I have to elongate these two and these two are kept at same distance. So that would mean my molecule now looks like So I have done this distortion now how the this thing will change now what do I left with so I am left with so first of all I have killed my C4 right now there is no central C4 axis principal axis is now reduced to C2 C2 which is coming out of the plane of the board perpendicular to this so that these two are reflected and these two are reflected right that is C2 and then you will also have C2s which will be so these c2s are also killed now you don't have this c2 right this c2 is not there so what you have is this c2 and this c2 so basically you know you have two c2s perpendicular to your original c2 that means it's a d2 point group other than that you also have you're still left with sigma h you're still left with i right so so sigma H and then you will have one sigma here, so sigma one, sigma two. So basically, three sigmas are there, right? So this will be D2H kind of point group. So let us uh, verify this. Let me look at D2H character table. Yeah, so D2H should have E, three C2s which are perpendicular to each other. So you have this I and then three sigmas again. If one is along x, y, the other will be y, z, third will be z, x, so which we have, right? So, so that is correct. So basically by elongating these two bonds from D4H, we are going to lower symmetry point group, we are going to D2H, right? So why did I say lower symmetry point group? Because here the order of the group is lower, right? Okay, so now let's look at more examples. So you have MX5 which is trigonal bipyramidal what will be the point group here so let me draw the molecule so in this case equatorial bonds are of different length and axial bonds are of uh, different length right so this is a trigonal bipyramidal case what will be the point group point group is d3h here and the distortion I'm looking for is elongating two axial bonds. So if I'm elongating two axial bonds, they are anyways elongated, right? So if I elongate it further or decrease the length of these MX bonds, it should not change anything so the point group remains as d3h okay so this is a simple case now let's look at more such diagonal bipyramidal cases so you have again you have mx5 diagonal bipyramidal and the distortion now will be different so again this is d3h and the distortion is what we are doing is elongating one of the equatorial bonds so if we elongate one of the equatorial bonds what do we get and what are the symmetry elements that we are killing so let's say this is elongated now try to think that where are we now so this looks like a water molecule so what you have got is e c2 c2 is passing through this mx bond sigma is again the plane of the one will be the plane of the board another is perpendicular to the plane of the board both containing this elongated equatorial bond mx so you have sigma v1 and sigma v2 right so point group will be c2v so again from D3H we have gone down to C2V, gone down in order of the group, okay. 
Okay, let's look at more examples. I have two more examples. So we have again we have MX5 and we have starting geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. So and the distortion, so this is D3H. Distortion here is while we are elongating one of the equatorial bonds, one equatorial bond, and simultaneously we are shortening one axial bond. Okay, so let us see how it works out. So you have MX elongated, these two are not changed. This one is reduced in length, this one is still the same. Now, what do you think will be the point group? So, what do you have? So, now if we try to put a C2 axis here along this MX bond, I do not have any C2 axis, right? Because although these two will be exchanged, but these two axes will not be exchanged because their bond lengths are different. What about sigma? There is no sigma in the plane of the board but there is one sigma which will contain the two axial and one equatorial and this m atom right so these two will be reflected so we have e and we have sigma any other symmetry element we don't have any other symmetry element no c3 axis here because these three will not be rotated so the point group now is cs point group e and sigma that is all right so that is also easy but see now when we are doing any kind of distortion what you have to keep in mind is that what are the symmetry elements originally present and by doing this process out of those symmetry elements what elements got killed because of distortion okay so if you can think in those lines you should be able to find an answer very quickly let's do one more example and then we can stop so let's say mx6 octahedral case so let's say, let me do one example and one I will give for home assignment. Okay, so elongating two trans bonds. This is a simple one. Okay, let's do both. So how does it look? So you have M. All the bonds are of same length, right? So they are equally spaced out. Okay. Now this is OH point. Now this is the distortion elongating two trans bonds, which can be anything. Maybe you can take top and bottom, or you can take this one, this one, anything will give you the same result. So let's say elongate these two bonds. So what happens? Now what we have done is we have killed a lot of elements from OH, we have gone down to D4H. Now how does it work? So try to again find out missing elements, what all elements are killed in the process and hence the, this becomes a case like PTCL4. Okay. So D4H, you all know by now that what all uh, molecules would look like D4H. So so this looks like a PTCL4 kind of molecule, right? Okay, let's do one last example. This is a slightly tricky one. So I want to cover this title again. Okay, now here, let me first draw the, write the distortion. So it says close 90 degree angles between three MX bonds in both sets of cis related positions. So it is little tricky to understand what the question is asking cis related positions. 
So if we try to draw a coordinate system and put the molecule onto this, so you have basically M sitting here, X, X, X going along the coordinates, which is X, Y, Z, right? And the other three are sitting like this, right? So now if you consider this X, let me circle this this x this x and this x they are one set of cis related positions the other three are other so let me draw it with a different color so the pink set is second set right now if you notice that the angle between x axis y axis and z axis is 90 90 90 right so now they are saying that close that angle so it's like an umbrella which is opening up and then you're closing down x y and z axis to an angle less than 90 degrees so x y z are no longer perpendicular to each other they form like a cone right so if i'm looking from the top it looks something like this something like a star that's how octahedral in general would look like but now these three vertices are not meeting at a point where it, those axes are forming 90 degree angle. So if I look from the side, it looks something like this. It looks like a cone shaped thing. So this is the top of the star and these are the bonds and this is the third bond is at the back and the other one will be, so you have one bond in the front. So this is how it looks from the side. So this is the top view and this is the side view, right? So I hope it is easy to see now that uh, what all elements uh, got killed. So I have already drawn this molecule for you. So I would give you as a home assignment. So try to work it out. Try to work it out. What is the point group of this molecule? So try to see. This is the most complicated one, but if you can't find it, we'll again discuss during interaction session. But if you can find it, well and good. So try to work out what all symmetry elements are killed in the process and what is the point group of the final. So I think that is all. So we have discussed a lot of examples today. So keep practicing. So this course requires a lot of practice. So if you can't figure out the point group of a molecule, the rest of the course will be very, very difficult. So I would suggest you to practice a lot of molecules and then we can cover the rest of the topics very easily. Okay. So that is all for today. Thank you. Mm -hmm.